Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. And good Friday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 12th of February. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information at weather.gov slash Alaska. Call us on the weather info line at 800-472-0391. You can find us on Marine VHF and, of course, on your NOAA weather radio. During the daytime in between Alaska weather, you can find us on Facebook with little tidbits of information that will add to your weather understanding about uh, active situations or just a little bit of climate information about uh, days without snow, days with a little more snow, or days where we've melted all the snow away, or perhaps uh, blow snow and blowing snow up on the North Slope. For Twitter, you can find us on NWS Alaska. That's the entire statewide account, and you can continue the conversation about Alaska weather using the hashtag AKWX. Each weather forecast office in Alaska, there are three, has their own Twitter account right now, NWS Fairbanks, NWS Anchorage, and NWS Juno, if you'd like to localize your information just a bit more. And on YouTube, during the afternoon around 4 o'clock, find us at NWS Anchorage for your daily afternoon map briefing, where you'll see the surface charts you like here on the show about 5:30 on Alaska Public Media and of course following the show you get your entire broadcast from our broadcast partner here on their YouTube channel just search for AKWX TV and you'll get this entire show and you can watch it over and over again now if you're sitting in Barrow going goodness I'd sure like to fly out of here tonight chances are maybe not there's blizzard warning in effect right now and that's going to continue into sunday morning at six o'clock as it stands right now and after that we'll reevaluate the situation and see if things are going to improve blizzard conditions right now are occurring across the north slope and they're spreading westward throughout the night the blizzard warning is from about wainwright eastward all the way down the north slope and extends southward as far as the Sag River DOT station on the Dalton Highway. There's heavy drifting snow there and points north. Visibility, plan for whiteout conditions. If you don't see that right now, chances are it's going to redevelop or move into your, situ into your area. So plan for the worst, hope for the best, but plan for the worst as you are uh, hunkering down right now and tonight and probably most of Saturday as well. The winds are expected to blow from the east from about 45 to 55 miles per hour. So that's going to move the snow around and on top of that, it is snowing. So uh, several inches of snow will be possible, but you'll have a hard time measuring that thanks to the uh, strong winds blowing that and drifting that around. So blizzard warnings in effect until 6 a.m from Wainwright eastward toward Kaktovik and a winter weather advisory for the uh, northern slopes of the Brooks Range there on the eastern side and especially from the Sag River uh, northward, the DOT station there seeing heavy drifting snow. So once again, be extra careful there on the north slope. Here's a weather situation around uh, Alaska. You can see once again a wave of low pressure working its way into Prince William Sound. That's where most of the moisture is going. It's way out on the eastern side. And we've seen some pockets of rainfall moving over Prince William Sound and into the eastern side of Anchorage. Rainfall on the hillside, not snow. Between that and the next weather system, there's a wealth of dry air. Some of that was working into southern and central parts of the panhandle today. But notice this big kind of comma shape here all the way from the Chukchi Seacoast right over Point Barrow all the way out toward Bethel. That is a pocket of cold air north of the Bering Strait and warmer air out across the interior. Not really moving one way or the other. It's all kind of collected right here and the warmer air is trying to nudge it out of the way but it's not going anywhere. So the moisture has collected along this and we have a nice steady stream of lift in the upper atmosphere that's bringing this right over Point Barrow. And this is where we've got stronger winds as well. A lot of the stronger easterly flow is zipping right along the coast, 
all of these forces combined right here creating a very windy situation and creating snow thus the blizzard situation that we see across the north slope and that does not look like it's going to ease up very much as we head through most of your saturday and into early sunday morning out across the west you can see another wave of low pressure south of adak that has collected a lot of moisture streaming across the central and southern gulf a lot of that again is not very organized at this point across southern parts of the gulf Across most of the west coast, it's just cold. Northerlies are streaming through the Bering Strait over St. Lawrence Island and out over the central and western Bering Sea. North and easterly flow there over the ice, and the ice continues to grow ever so slightly. We'll talk about the ice edge here in just a little bit. Here's a look at the weather situation. Again, heavy snow, blowing and drifting snow, and blizzard conditions for the north slope. That's the biggest game in town right now. Areas of light snow a little bit further south of the Brooks Range and a lot of dry air over the Yukon Valley and into the Kuskokwim Valley for the south and west. Low pressure across the northern Gulf at 984 millibars. Some pockets of rainfall, but not nearly as uh, prevalent as what it was yesterday or the day before. The front now working its way into south central and southeastern Alaska. That should die off fairly quickly through the rest of the night. Not across the west, a few areas of low pressure working across the western bearing. That's at 972 millibars. And that front will start sneaking northward tonight. Those waves across the north and eastern gulf will produce some areas of light rainfall possible. I'd say widely scattered across southeast given the dry conditions we're seeing right now. Snow showers at elevation there, but not a whole lot for the lower terrain, especially across the northern and uh, central Cook Inlet region and up through the Susitna Valley. Anything we see out across the valley will be out in the west in the hills. For tonight, uh, that wave of colder air is trying to organize and win. It's working over the Seward Peninsula, but it's not really making a whole lot of eastward progress. We'll call it a stationary boundary right now. And then south of the Brooks Range, here's our warm front. It's kind of lying right across the hills, and what that's doing is constricting some of those easterly winds and channeling them right across the north slope. Well, with that and the snow production and the wind, we get those blizzard conditions that will continue tonight and likely continue tomorrow as that warmer air is trying to edge northward. It's really not going to make a big impact as far as your sensible weather goes temperature wise, but wind and snow and uh, blizzard conditions, yes, that should continue. Look for low pressure across the western gulf south of Kodiak Island at 980 millibars on Saturday. That'll be one of the stronger circulations in the gulf. None of them are that strong. A south and easterly flow working into the Kenai Peninsula may produce some periods of rain and snow showers across the Cook Inlet. A better chance for rain across Prince William Sound. And areas of light rain will be widely scattered across parts of southeastern Alaska as usual. A better chance that that will be fairly mild conditions for you. Out across the west, rain and snow showers for the Pribilovs and most of the chain. As we get into Sunday, it looks like that front never really makes it off the north coast. That keeps you in that easterly flow, that colder, blizzard-producing snow. However, the dynamics or the, the conditions needed to get that snow going will probably lean a little bit more to the west and northwest. And if that's the case, that may take a little bit of the pain off of the Beaufort Sea coast and maybe off of Barrow. We'll have to see though. It's going to be very, very close quarters there for where that edge sets up. But it does look like the wind stays up, so any snow on the ground or nearby at the next village could be blowing your way from east to west. So plan on the wind staying there through Sunday, even if the snow isn't falling quite so hard. So be extra careful there. Again, as blizzard warnings are posted for the North Slope from Wainwright eastward uh, through Sunday morning at 6 a.m. Across southwest, look for periods of light rainfall there. A 989 millibar low parks just off the coast of Cape Newenham. We'll keep uh, Kodiak Island in a gentle southerly wind. Pockets of snow showers up across the higher elevations of the Chugach will be possible throughout the weekend there. And our next wave of low pressure will start to sit closer to southeast. Now, some models keep this a little bit further south, so the position of the warmer and wetter air as it's relating to you in Juneau or Petersburg or Craig could be a little bit different by Sunday. We'll get a better chance at this tomorrow, but it looks like there is another wave working its way up the coast. And again, if it's a little bit faster, that could put more of southeast in that warmer air as early as Sunday, or it could keep you in more of a cooler and slightly drier position as we get into Sunday if the low is still down here across the uh, Pacific Northwest and the Eastern Gulf. So that's a look at your weather map and the synopsis as we get into most of the weekend. Your forecast uh, today, well, we'll start with temperatures. We stayed fairly mild today. A little bit of sunshine for parts of Southeast popped many stations back into the mid-40s. 
Not too bad in Juneau, Sitka at 45, a Craig and Klawak, Ketchikan and Annette all closing in on 50 degrees by late afternoon, 43 in Yakutat, 39 in Valdez today. It was 44 in Cold Cordova and 46 in Seward, just shy of 40 by 3 o'clock in Homer today with 38 in Kenai, 37 in Anchorage. 32 in Cantwell, 30 in Talkeetna today, a little bit cooler there. 12 in Fairbanks with Healy showing 35, Fort Greeley 29, 16 in Eagle, a little bit cooler in Northway this afternoon, 9 in Fort Yukon northward. We see single digits there with the winds cranking up from Barrow to Atkasuk to Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse and 7 in Kaktovik. If you've got some pictures and you can safely send them and the internet's not too bogged down with everybody else uh, getting on Instagram and Facebook and everything, tag us with those conditions. Look out your window, it would be great. We'd love to see it and we'll show it maybe tomorrow. Uh, hashtag AKWX if you use Twitter and uh, we'll watch for that as we go through our day. NWS Fairbanks, I'm sure, would love to see those. As you look out in Kotzebue Sound, four above in Kivalina, one below for Kotzebue, one above in Shushmaref and Nome was showing only two by late afternoon. 12 in Grayling, 25 as you head up the river in the Kuskokwim to 16 in the McGrath and 18 in Bethel. Around Lake Iliamna, we saw temperatures anywhere from the 20s and 30s and then down the Alaska Peninsula, 40s into the 30s as you head to Sandpoint. Uh, Cold Bay and Falls Pass, 40 in Akiak today, 34 in St. Paul and the central and western chain generally in the mid 30s this afternoon. Now overnight low temperatures will stay in the upper 20s to lower 30s for south central to Kodiak Island. Mid to upper 30s, even some 40 degree readings there for southern parts of southeast. The interior uh, single digits mostly for the Tanana Valley as you get into 6 degrees for Fort Yukon and the upper Yukon Valley, 0 and below for the north slope. Again, blizzard conditions there. Anywhere from 5 to 15 below for Kotzebue Sound, 8 below for Nome. Single digits for the northern Yukon coast in the Norton Sound and teens, 20s, even a few 30s as you get into the Kuskokwim coastline and into Bristol Bay, 31 for St. Paul and mid to upper 30s for parts of the central and western chain by tomorrow. South Central, 30s and 40s tomorrow, 40 around uh, Kodiak Island tomorrow. Uh, lower 40s for southeast, mid 40s in fact for Ketchikan and Annette. 20s and 30s around Prince William Sound. It looks like Seward could reach 42 tomorrow. Mid 20s for parts of uh, the central Tanana Valley, the upper Yukon Valley in the upper 20s around Eagle. 20 for Fort Yukon, 19 in Arctic Village. Single digits again tomorrow. Don't go outside in blizzard conditions. You'll be uh, very careful if you have to move around at all. For Kotzebue Sound, look for uh, single digit temperatures there around uh, Kotzebue and Kivalina. 10 in Nome. And it looks like 34 around King Salmon and a little bit milder there around Dillingham by the afternoon. Close to 40 for the central and eastern chain as well as most of the Alaska Peninsula. Flying weather is going to be tough tomorrow. Look for uh, isolated IFR conditions at most of your airports there with blizzard conditions in effect. As well as uh, areas along the middle and upper Yukon Valley. Watch for IFR for some of your western Alaska range passes. And isolated pockets of IFR across the Dixon entrance to the southern outer coast of southeast as well as parts of... Um, Oh, sand point and eastward toward Akiak throughout the day. Your pass conditions in Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass right now look to be MVFR. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass we're going to call IFR for most of your Saturday. Rainy Pass also looks to be IFR through some of the day. Windy Pass may see some improvements after a start at MVFR. Isabel Pass marginal on and off throughout most of the day. Mentasta Pass looks to be MVFR for your Saturday. Tanita Pass right now looks pretty good. VFR conditions there. Portage Pass likely leaning back over toward IFR throughout the afternoon, and Chilkoot and White Pass probably going back up to MVFR conditions as we go through the day. Now, your freezing levels show that warmer air is still accumulating across the central and southern parts of southeast. The surface freezing line still hovering very close to the privlovs, and that may make precipitation over the weekend kind of mix, a little rain and snow showers passing through the islands there. Icing potential above 2 to about 4,000 feet across the middle and upper Yukon Valley, and above uh, 5 to 6 around that uh, northward band of moisture moving across the northern and western Gulf and into parts of southeast by Saturday. Again, below 6,000 feet, most of that not reaching uh, isolated moderate, and we'll have another pocket of icing potential as you head out toward the Great Slave Lake. The jet stream has a pretty pronounced trough digging again across the North Pacific. Wind speeds there, 95 to 150 upstream, and then just flying across the North Pacific and into the Gulf at 150 knots for your Saturday. This little uh, push of air moving across the Chukchi Sea coast is also helping to enhance the lift and the snow making potential there across the North Slope and keeping those surface winds going very strong from the east. At 9,000 feet we get a little help from the easterly flow 
At 40 knots, winds are picking up across the interior from the south at 20 to 25, and south and westerlies across the Gulf, coming in a little bit faster on the southern end at 50 to 65 knots. At 3,000 feet, you have easterlies blowing from 30 and then racing up to 50 knots there as they reach up to Point Barrow. Slightly slower winds here across the interior, 10 to 20 at 3,000 feet. Our south and westerly winds are present across the Gulf, but not quite as fast at 9,000 feet as we see them here, 35 to 45. And working from east to west across southwestern Alaska, about 10 to 15 knots. Low pressure again sitting just uh, south of Point Hope and Point Lay. And turbulence potential uh, will certainly keep that across the northern Gulf below 4,000 feet. Watch for some occasional moderate there outside of the Copper River Basin and down from the, about the central and southern parts of the Cook Inlet into Shelikoff Strait. Below 4,000 feet at least for the north coast, probably finding some occasional moderate, but you're not going to know it because of the whiteout conditions and probably inability to fly for tomorrow. So be extra careful there if you're just going out to scrub off the airplane and make sure it's all doing okay. We're going to take a look at the ice edge here in just a few minutes. Stick around for the rest of your marine forecast as well. We'll be back in a few. Good evening. I'm Harry Keeling and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest, Walter Combs, has been involved with one of the most dramatic improvements in the flying scene in Alaska, I would say since GPS, and that's the weather cams. It's also astonishing to me that I've never had Walter on the show before because he's been working this project for some time. And I'll tell you what, it is, it is by, by far one of the greatest, most dramatic improvements in flying, uh, aids to aviation safety in Alaska for a long time. Walter, welcome to Hangar Flying. Thank you. <clears throat> Walter's been in Alaska 30 years, been with the FAA since 1996, previously worked on Capstone, and has been the program manager of Weather Camps since 2011. So, Walter, in my opinion, I've already shared with the audience, Weather Camps is, is, a, is a milestone program. It is, it's incredible what it brings to the table. Uh, we can't measure what it's done for aviation safety, but it's got to be phenomenal. When did the Weather Camps program start? Well, it originally started in about 1999 as a kind of a research and development program. Uh, the agency picked it up shortly after that, uh, the FAA here in Alaska did, and started uh, uh, installing cameras in different locations where pilots were requesting them. And eventually we began to build a network. Um, so by about uh, 2007, in, in around 2007, uh, we went to work uh, putting together a business case to, to formalize the program within the agency. And in 2008, or late 2007, we got a final investment decision, which means it was funded as a program and it's baselined, and, and, uh, and, and we took it from there. So, 80 in 2007, how many do you have now? Uh, yeah, we had 80 in 2007. We have 228 camera sites right now. Wow. and. Uh, uh, that are FAA owned and managed. Well, as I've said before, from from the beginning, it's a great aid to start safer flying. But you're not uh, standing still. Talk about some of the improvements that have just happened recently. Well, we have a program that, uh, with the agency, installed this network of 230 or so cameras. We've got a couple more to put in, but uh, we've got all these cameras out there and. And we still have holes in the network, or gaps that we, that we like to call them, where we could use cameras. And so what we're doing is we're, we're hosting third-party cameras, as we call them, uh, which is a privately owned or, or owned by other than FAA uh, camera site, and we host those images on the website. So this, this surprised me, and, and it surprised a number of people that I've talked to. But all of a sudden, when you look at the website, you not only have the 228 in Alaska, but you've got a bunch of them in Canada. What a great deal. How many you got in Canada? Uh, right now we're hosting 65, and I believe there's about 160 or so uh, Canada camera f uh, sites where there's three to four cameras at each site. But uh, we'll have all of those on the website soon. Wow. Yeah, what's really nice about that is that we can expand our network by using cameras that already exist. And uh, the agency 
benefits from that, and so do the pilots benefit from that uh, you know, immensely. <clears throat> well, I got to tell you, I mean, when you fly up from the lower 48 and you get in the trench and you do different places, having that aid before you take off is just, it's great. So I, okay. I, I got to tell you, on behalf of the aviators and pilot, the pilots and the owners and the dispatchers and the passengers, I got to thank you. I mean, it is just really amazing. Um, let's talk about, we're probably going to run out of time, but let's get started on another area that is going to be very important. And, and most of the viewers will remember the terrible fatal accident we had in, down Ketchikan, uh, uh, Mr. Fjords, last summer. I understand that you're going to put a couple of cameras down there? We are. Um, uh, we've kind of known that down in that area we, we needed more cameras, but we're we were limited in funding and limited in our baseline to the number of sites that we could put in. Uh, so there was a there's a couple areas in there that we uh, would have liked to put cameras. And uh, with this accident, uh, we decided, or the agency decided at the flight standards level, to fund two more cameras to put in there to help aid the pilots in flight decisions between Ketchikan and that Misty Fjords area over in Rudyard Bay. So there's a northern flight or northern route and a southern route that the pilots fly on the, the northern, this is what we're calling them as a way to, to uh, uh, delineate them. But the northern route is during good weather, they can fly over the mountains and straight, pretty much straight over to the Misty Fjords area. Uh, and, and, and when weather sets down, they would fly that southern route, which is the waterway back down and around over to Ketchikan. So we want to put cameras, uh, one on each side about midway or one on each route about midway uh, to help uh, the pilots determine whether they can fly through those areas or not prior to taking off. Walter, we've run out of time. I want to get you back on because okay. there's a couple other new improvements that, that, that I want to talk about and I think our viewers would just like to know more about the, the nuts and bolts of the program. Okay. Good. Thanks for being on the program tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Tune in next time and we'll have Walter back on to talk about weather cams. Intel. Thanks, Harry. See you again on Monday. As we're talking about, the sea ice edge is still working its way southward. Uh, as of yesterday, the uh, main concentration there shown in white, that's 80% or above, was about 50 to 60 nautical miles. That's closed the gap just a little bit over the last 24 hours there. One thing to note, though, uh, our sea ice analysts there for the sea ice desk for Alaska showing us that the ice edge here around the Yukon coastline, uh, if you once you get off the shore fast ice, the ice is really pretty thin. So uh, maybe about four inches to about a foot deep. So if uh, it's outside of your local traditional knowledge, chances are the ice out across uh, just off the shore fast and stable ice is not stable at all. So make sure you know where you're going and have checked things out before you get out there and perhaps uh, take on any hunting over the weekend. So again, conditions might not be exactly as they seem, as that ice could be a little bit on the thin side there, especially across the Yukon coast and uh, on the west. Now, as we look at southeastern Alaska, look for northerlies coming down through the Lynn Canal and the inside water southeasterlies picking up across the Clarence Strait. 30 knots with a 6-foot sea. The outer coast, 25 knots in all areas, about 10 to 12-foot seas. For your Saturday, for Sunday, winds diminish a little bit in the north, down to 15 knots. Look for northerlies in the north and Lynn Canal at 20 knots with a 4-foot foot sea and winds are also diminishing inside of Clarence Strait at 25 knots with a 5 foot sea, 12 foot seas on the outside of the Dixon entrance. For south central, southeasterly is coming all the way across the northern Gulf and into Prince William Sound at about 20 to 30 knots, 4 foot seas on the inside, 10 foot seas on the outside. Northerly is coming down Cook Inlet 20 to 25 and look for 8 foot seas west of the Barrens. 5 foot seas inside of Shelikoff Strait with an east wind coming into Kodiak Island becoming southerly on Sunday and southerlies will make their way all the way into the northern and western Gulf at 20 to 25 winds diminish inside of Prince William Sound at 15 knots and north and easterly winds inside of Cook Inlet with 5 to 6 foot seas there for Sunday. For the Alaska Peninsula, northeasterlies inside of Bristol Bay, east and northeasterly winds across the Pacific Coast at 15 to 25, 6 to 8 foot seas there and 4 foot seas a little bit further down the Bering Sea Coast with an easterly wind at 15 those become a little more light and variable on Sunday. Southeasterlies also diminish inside of Prince William Sound. We get a southwesterly wind coming up the Pacific coast at 20 to 25 with 10 to 11 foot seas on Sunday. 
For the Aleutians, north and easterly winds for the eastern and central chain, 15 to 25 is at most, uh, 8 to 9 foot seas on the Pacific coast and 5 to 7 foot seas across the Bering Sea coast. North and northwesterly winds from Kiska to Attu at 15 to 20 knots there. On Sunday, you'll see winds blowing a little bit further east from a northwesterly direction, 5 to 6 foot seas in the central chain. More of a light and variable flow changing throughout the day from Nikolsky to uh, Unalaska. And southerlies are developing south of Unalaska to Nikolsky with 15 knots and a 9-foot sea on Sunday. Now for tomorrow, look for a north and easterly flow cutting across the ice. Uh, Four-foot seas there around the Kuskokwim uh, Delta and northeasterlies coming over St. Matthew. All around 20 knots or so for your Saturday. For Sunday, a little bit more of a northerly shift takes place from St. Lawrence Island to Nunavak Island. 15 knots in the Kuskokwim Delta region, northeasterlies for the Pribloffs with a five-foot sea. And we'll keep those five-foot seas around St. Matthew as well with the 20-knot wind for Sunday. Across the North Slope, once again, blizzard warnings are in effect from Wainwright eastward all the way along the coastline and south to the DOT camp there on the Dalton Highway. Look for those easterlies up to 35 knots with blowing and drifting snow that could be heavy at times on top of accumulating snow upwards of around 4 inches or so around the Barrow region. Winds will be a little bit lighter as you round Cape Lisburn to Point Hope. Northwesterlies coming into Codsview Sound on a 20 knot wind for Sunday. Winds diminish ever so slightly. The blizzard warning right now goes until 6 o'clock in the morning. Look for an easterly flow off of Wainwright to Point Lay and winds considerably lower from Cape Lisburn into Codsview Sound at about 10 to 15. Recapping tonight's weather, the most active weather is for the North Slope and dangerous conditions will be there as we do expect whiteout conditions to continue through that period. The strongest winds look like they'll be from Saturday to Saturday night. So plan accordingly, be safe and make sure you have a plan. As you go into the northern and eastern coast, look for uh, periods of light rain for southeast. Snow showers at higher elevations there, but not expecting a whole lot up and down the Cook Inlet at this time. Out to the west, pockets of rain and snow showers will be possible around the Pribilovs with light rainfall scattered around the northern and eastern coast. Snow and blowing snow is expected to continue whiteout conditions throughout the daytime and blizzard warnings right now are set to expire at 6 a.m. on Sunday. Be careful, be safe. We'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.